I was adopted. When I was little, my mom and dad told me I was delivered by a stork. Later, they said I was wanted and chosen, that I was special. That's what you're supposed to tell adopted kids. It was only when I was older that I considered I wasn't wanted at all. In adopted lingo, and for kids, in my position, we called that, without even knowing it at the time, the primal wound. That's the one where your biological mother rejects you. One day I decided I wanted to find her and thank her for having me. I got a phone call from a researcher long after I decided to look for her and forgotten about it, who told me the name of a woman, Nicole Bristol, and gave me her address. This woman also told me that at birth my name was Bridget. That would have made me Bridget Bristol. I hopped in the car and drove to her. And I have a memory of stopping at a Denny's in Santa Monica, of all places, to powder my face. I knocked on her door. Would you have given up a baby for adoption many, many years ago? I asked. She invited me in and casually introduced me to her neighbor. Now, they must have been pretty good friends, because after she told him that I was indeed the child that she'd given up for adoption, he teased her about being promiscuous and said, Nicole, I bet you don't know who the father is. Well, she didn't, and that's when she turned to me minutes after I met her and said, you are a one-night stand in Las Vegas. That's how I found out I came to be. Now, Nicole and I didn't stay connected, but in those earlier days, she would call me from time to time crying, and I think intoxicated, saying she wished she'd kept me. I'm so glad she didn't. <laughs> I regularly get depressed on my birthday, and my husband waits for my tears. I wonder, who are my people, and who loves me? I know I'm supposed to feel special, and happy, but I just can't quite get there. I'm always really glad on May 30th when I wake up after my birthday. I read recently that adopted people get depressed on and around their birthday because it reminds them of their original abandonment. I kept finding Nicole a secret from my mom and dad because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. And I didn't think they'd understand that I wanted some clue to my existence and why I felt that I didn't fit into my family. Well, in retrospect, I don't think I would have fit into any family, and I don't think we're supposed to. So many secrets. Nicole kept me a secret from her mom and dad, from her mom, I'm not sure who her dad was, and everybody else in her family. They never knew I existed, and they don't know now. She drove from Las Vegas to Los Angeles where she could have me privately. She didn't want to endure the shame of having people know she was carrying a baby. She had been through so much. She was raped and abused physically as a young girl, and also abandoned by her own mother. Amazingly to me, Nicole did not have an abortion. Granted, they were illegal and dangerous back then, but still. I'm one of the only women I know that's never been pregnant or had an abortion, and I'm pretty sure I would have gotten rid of me. Nicole told me that a family friend was paying a surprise visit to her in Los Angeles, so she needed to get me out as quickly as possible. She went to the doctor and took Pitocin. I told that story to a friend once, and she said, Janet, no wonder you're always in a rush all the time. <laughs> Nicole didn't hold me on my birthday, and there was no one there to greet me or welcome me in the hospital room. But I never thought about that, because I've always just been so grateful to be alive. But recently, 
on a psychedelic journey, I contemplated many things about my life and conception. This is something I do once or twice a year when my husband is out of town. <laughs> I, <laughs> I build an altar, and I make a nest, and I close my eyes, and for many hours I journey into myself and I follow the trails of thoughts and emotions to the pockets inside me they want me to go. That night I wept. I wept for the mothers I had. And I wept for the mothers I'll never have. And I wept like I have before and I will again for the mother I'll never be. I thought and overthought about having children but never did. And lying there under colorful blankets surrounded by heart rocks and feathers and candles, things I've collected from the earth, I wept for that baby, me, that was delivered into that hospital room with no mother and father to greet her, no relatives and no friends. And I wept for Nicole and the baby shower she never had in my or her honor. And I wept for her sadness about not keeping me and never having another child. And I wept in gratitude that she gave me away. And I wept in the knowing that I wasn't meant to birth children in this lifetime, but other things perhaps. And that maybe I was meant to be strong and whole, I hope to get there someday, so that I could break the cycle of pain that came in the women that were abused sexually and emotionally and physically before me. And then I heard a guitar playing. It was me. It was a song. It was a, my song, a song I had written about my conception, about this very thing. I'm going to play my favorite part for you. <laughs> this is my favorite verse. I'm forever grateful that you like those city lights. I don't care much for Vegas, but that city gave me life. I got pain and pleasures and a lovely, lonely core. And it's okay that I was made behind a hotel door. <laughs> and then I heard a chorus that filled the whole room. My chorus. One night stand in Vegas, baby, that's all right with me. That's the way they made me, and how I came to be. One night stand in Vegas, baby, that's all right with me. I'd rather be one night stand and never get to see. Oh, oh. Moments small and grand. I am everything from a one night stand. I had one more vision that night. This time it was me, again, as a baby, in that same hospital room being born. Only, wow, it was me birthing myself. Me coming out of my own vagina. I reached down and I picked up that baby, and I cried tears of joy at the sight 
of her. And I said, I've been waiting for you. Welcome to the world. And then my arm came out of the colorful blankets that were covering me now, big me in my living room. And I cradled my face just like this. And I welcomed myself to myself. I am everything from a one-night stand. Yeah.